Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level chemistry for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of alkenes, and in particular, on addition polymers. Hi, I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level chemistry with our helpful revision resources tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button, and whilst you're watching, please leave any comments down below about anything you're unsure of. If it's your first time watching, make sure to let us know so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the video. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson three of three in this tutorial, covering the topic of addition polymers. This is the final video in our series of three lessons on the topic of alkenes. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. We'll be looking at polymerization reactions and the intermolecular forces of polyalkanes. We'll then look at polychloroethene and some addition polymers. These are the AQA specification points for today's lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and have a quick read through them before we begin. We'll start by looking at how addition polymers are formed. Polymers are long chain molecules made from several smaller molecules known as monomers. Alkenes form addition polymers through polymerization reactions. The monomers in the reaction would be alkenes which join together. After the carbon-carbon double bond is broken, the addition polymers made from alkenes are referred to as polyalkenes. Here we can see a reaction where phenylethene is forming a polymer. This is the repeating unit, or monomer. Since the double bond has opened up, the small n shows that there are many repeating units. This is a section of the polymer that is formed. We'll move on to see how unreactive addition polymers are. The polyalkenes that form will only contain single bonds, which means that they are saturated compounds. The main carbon chain is nonpolar. This means that the addition polymers are extremely unreactive. Now, we'll be looking at how the understanding about polymers has developed over time. New discoveries are being made with polymers constantly. The way we view polymers has changed over time, as properties of naturally occurring polymers, like DNA, have been modified to make them synthetic, like nylon. Each polymer has different properties. Each one can have a different use and application in real life. As we can see here. Now, We'll focus on the nature of intermolecular forces between the molecules of polyalkenes. Intermolecular forces determine the properties of polyalkenes. The long chains of polymers are held together by van der Waals forces as the chains are nonpolar. Remember, longer polymer chains are held closer together, which makes the van der Waals forces stronger. If the polyalkene consists of long, straight chains rather than short branched chains, it will be stronger and rigid. A polymer does not only have to consist of van der Waals forces. If an electronegative atom is present in the polymer, it can be dipolar and have permanent dipole-dipole forces. Now, let's look at some uses of PVC. The properties of polymers can be modified using a plasticizer. A 
a plasticizer makes a polymer more flexible by pushing the different polymer chains away from each other. As the chains are now further away, the intermolecular forces between them are weaker and therefore the chains can slide over each other. This causes the polymer to be flexible and bend into different shapes. This is a visual representation of what a plasticizer does. Polychloroethene, or PVC, is used in the production of drain pipes and window frames. PVC is a hard material, but it is relatively brittle at room temperature. This is because it has polymer chains that are long and packed closely together. If PVC is plasticized, it is used in electrical cable insulation, flooring tiles and clothing. When a plasticizer is added to PVC, this makes it more flexible and bendable. Here, we can see that PVC is formed from chloroethene. We will now look at how to draw the repeating unit of addition polymers. A repeating unit is a portion of the whole molecule that repeats itself several times. A polymer consists of lots of repeating units joined together. The repeating unit has a similar structure to the monomer, except it has the double bond opened up. We'll now look at a method for drawing repeating units. First, draw the carbon-carbon double bond and the group of atoms att attached to each carbon. Next, replace the double bond with a single bond and add an extra single bond coming out of each of the carbon atoms. Now, let's look at the method for drawing repeating units from a section of polymer chain. First, look at the entire polymer chain and figure out which section is repeating itself. This will be classed as the repeating unit. Once you've identified the repeating unit, add a double bond which will be the monomer. Finally, we will have a look at some rules for naming polymers. Addition polymers are named after the monomers that it's made of. When naming an addition polymer, you add poly to the name of the alkene monomer. Remember to add brackets around the alkene monomer. For example, the addition polymer of ethene would be polyethene. We've now covered all the learning objectives for today's lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything you didn't understand. We've now completed lesson three. If you liked this video, make sure to catch our latest videos by subscribing down below and leaving a comment on a topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch more videos on our series of A-level chemistry or visit our website studymind.co.uk for past paper compilations by topic and specification.